Hello everybody, this is Kevin from Audio Digital and I'm back again in the grid in the Bitwig Beta 3.0 and um, today I want to introduce you to a type of synthesis you can do in the grid called physical modeling. Physical modeling relies on feedback with very low delay times and that's one of the weaknesses of the grid is that you can't do feedback at very low delay times among modules, but you can have feedback within a module. In fact, uh, there's been an update recently in uh, beta three that adds uh, feedback into this phase module and it allows you to get that kind of effect, which is great. That's something that was in phase four, but wasn't in phase one. So within um, modules, you can have feedbacks. And so that's what we're going to use to do physical modeling in the grid. We're not going to use phase four here, but we are going to use the comb filter, which basically uh, can be used as a resonator. And the comb filter is basically just a delay line that has feedback at, at very low delay times. And uh, there is a type of physical modeling. In fact, I believe it was the first kind of physical modeling called car plus strong stream string sim simulation. And uh, it basically is a comb filter, right? I think there's a few minor differences, but at the end of the day, it's a comb filter. So in physical modeling, you have generally an exciter and then you have a resonator. So the, our comb filter is going to be our resonator. And we also need an exciter. So the exciter can just be a burst of noise. So what we're going to do here today is get a noise generator. And then I'm going to get a, an envelope and a the envelope so that we can create a quick burst of noise. <clears throat> so let's try that. So you can already hear it kind of sounds like a string. But in addition, what we want to do is tune the resonator so that it's at uh, C. Um, C3 basically, and that frequency is um, pretty close to 262. So you want to tune the resonator. Wait, that didn't work because I need to make sure it's hertz and not. So 262. All right. All right, so now we got a simple string sound. So the resonance here within our comb filter is going to control the decay of the string sound. And um, this, of course, controls the pitch. And then the plus minus, basically, if I go to minus, this gives me um, kind of like a square wave bass sound or an odd frequency uh, sound. And that doesn't sound as much like a string. You can use that if you want, but I usually use plus for this sort of use. So I think if you're trying to do maybe some uh, simulate some a sound of uh, air in a tube, you might want to use the negative one. But in any case, um, that's pretty much what you can do with this uh, resonator that we have here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of options. You can choose the delay time and or the decay time and, and the pitch. So everything else interesting is going to happen with the exciter. So as we um, mess with this, the, the character of the sound is going to change. So we can click on the stereo here and get stereo string sound. And we're going to get some difference if we make the the impulse a bit shorter or longer. But um, a more interesting thing we can do is add a filter to it. So let's come in here and add this filter. So we can make it more subtle. So that sounds a little bit more harp-like or something. The resonance here is definitely gives us a noticeable difference. All 
we can use a different filter type. So all these changes are very relevant to the, the um, outcome. <clears throat> so what else could we do? Um, let's, instead of using just white noise, what if we used um, an oscillator? So let's look at some of the oscillators. So I'm gonna put a phase one here instead, and I'm going to turn on the uh, pitch tracking and see what we get there. Let's uh, zero out this filter here. So here again, we get a different type of sound. We can use some of this uh, feedback here. And uh, especially if we're using something that's pitched, like this oscillator, it's very relevant um, if it's exactly matched in frequency to what we're doing with the comb filter or not. So as I shift this a bit, we're getting some pretty significant timbre shifts. And we can use this, uh, let's try this one here. So that's a lot of uh, fun. You can mess with that all day and get a bunch of different results. Um, another thing that you can do is use a sampler instead and try to find some uh, really quick uh, kind of things that are close to exciters. So let's look for like some, um, some drum sounds here like that. Let's see what that sounds like. So as you can see, as we go through these, we're getting a whole realm of different string-esque sounds. And if we adjust the pitch of these samples, that will also change the character. So you can, again, play with that forever and get a bunch of different results. So um, another thing I want to bring out is that we can continuously excite the resonator as opposed to just giving it a burst and get kind of more patty type sounds. So uh, let's, you, let's go back to using some noise again. Uh, well, we don't really need this here. We'll replace it. Oh, nope. Let's do it like that. Here we go. So we have our noise here again. And let's put in a different envelope that can sustain. And we're going to turn this down a bit. Sustain. Give it a little bit of an input there. It's kind of loud. So you can get a sound that is something kind of like a bowed string um, just from doing that. If you keep massaging it and adding more things, you can really get a uh, pretty convincing 
bowed string type sound. But that's another avenue you can go to and make some interesting sounds. I've actually made a, um, a violin simulation. Let me load that up for you. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So this is just using the same exciter. I'm using it at a, a much lower um, resonance value here, um, but I'm using a much more complicated um, exciter here to give it more of a, a violin type sound. So while this isn't a perfect violin simulation, I think it is uh, usable and it is just using this one resonator. You can even do multiple resonators to make a fuller sound at the same time and use different exciters and so forth. But anyway, hopefully this gives you an idea of the potential of using physical modeling in, in the grid. And if you don't have the grid, if you have another synthesizer that offers a comb filter and, and allows you to tune it to your keyboard, you can do a lot of these same techniques in other packages. But of course, the grid allows you to do, you know, so, uh, so many different variations and combine uh, oscillators and exciters in so many different ways that it's probably going to get you further than any uh, other synth that I'm aware of. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful and interesting. Uh, go ahead and use this technique and let me know uh, the results that you get in the comments. And if you have any questions, put those in the comments as well, and I'll try to, to answer them and get to them. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you don't like it, give it a dislike. And if you um, like this content, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can get more um, uh, of, of uh, my content as it comes out. I'm probably going to do at least several more videos about the grid because I'm really enthralled with it. So anyway, have fun with this stuff. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.